This idea that every single person that fits into this identity marker thinks and behaves and has had this experience. So they've become quite regressive in their quest to be progressive. I get asked this question a lot when I do talks is about, you know, discrimination, Steve, obviously, you know, being a guy, a, a, a man that was born in Africa, I've got a black mother, I'm, I'm, I guess, I don't know what the politically correct term is, so I'll say them all, mixed race, brown, well, I don't know what the, right. the correct term is, so <laughs> sure. just forgive me, uh, half cast, I don't yeah. know, Bra I'm brown, okay, I think yes, it's brown. I think you are. Um, did you not experience discrimination in business? I get this question a lot, and to me, it's, it's a fascinating question, because my brain goes, I don't care, yeah. Because I can't control it anyway. Yeah. Even if it were, it, I'm sure it's true. I'm sure there's multiple moments in the rise of my career when I went into boardrooms and everyone there was four times my age and, and white. I'm sure there was um, prejudices before mm. I even opened my mouth yeah. that acted for and probably against me. The thing is I can do nothing about them right. in terms of in that moment and in my my day-to-day -day life. I can't I can't cure your prejudice or discrimination. And I don't think it's my responsibility to. What right. I see my responsibility is like doing the best that I can with where I am and with what I have. And I then heard about this thing called labeling theory where in psychology, if you're given a label, it then has a big yes. impact on your future performance. So yes. if I call myself, um, if I label myself as oppressed or at a disadvantage, Thank you. I will start acting like I'm a disadvantaged person. I'll show up with less confidence, with more pessimism, and um, and all of those things are probably going to be more harmful than the discrimination itself. Absolutely. So it was a it was it was a decision that like to focus on what I can control on a on a macro level. Of course, you fight at every opportunity you have for equality and yes. to, to end systemic discrimination and to educate people better yes. from a very early age and to change the way that media looks and to have more black podcasters as we've done a big campaign around mm -hmm. and all of those things. But on a day to day, do I want to? burden myself as you say with um a label which I don't think will help will serve me right will help me show up better the answer is unfortunately is no and that is my personal decision and yeah. others can do with their life what they wish to yeah um but I don't think it will serve me and you can again this goes back to holding two truths you can you can choose not to be oppressed but then also fight for those that 100 percent, or fight for equality at the same time absolutely it's not to diminish the authenticity of the no. issue um no, and I, I also, uh, another reason why I'm very fierce about this um, is because I think as we have those conversations around representation, et cetera, I think we do need to see more people, whether it's black, brown, what have you, people that are in the minority, depending on where they are. Um, I think we need to see them positioned as powerful sovereign beings. Exactly so right. the reason I'm very serious about the conversations I have and saying, no, I'm not oppressed. I do know what oppression looks like. And I will continue to champion for, as you say, equality, et cetera. But I, it, it, it's actually my responsibility to claim my power as an individual who inhabits a black body. It's actually my responsibility. This has to be a part of the representation conversation. We can't always just want black people to step forward to talk about the struggle. Because just like you say, I started to notice actually that every panel that I would get invited to do all the interviews, it would start with something along the lines of, so Africa, as a black woman, yeah. so Africa, as a woman of color, what have you experienced? Nothing. What if I haven't experienced any kind of, what if I don't have some kind of story? Because I started to find that it would put me into a position where I would kind of feel like I have to find a story where something, but what if nothing happened? You know, why can't I just be seen as a writer, as a consultant, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur without being a black entrepreneur or a black speaker or a, all of which I really value. And I see the importance in recognizing those things in those specific terms. But why does it have to be positioned in such a way where I have to look for adversity connected to my race? So I've really started to be very firm around that and to reject that. And in, in, in interviews to say, I'm really curious to know why you opened the question like that. You know, and sometimes people don't even realize they're doing it because they've, it, it's just become a, a script, you know. That would be a terrifying rebuttal. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I had asked you that and I was, and I was not in a minority, I would be <laughs> fucking terrified. Right. I'd be terrified. Because you're right, there's, there's almost this assumption that you're going to be the voice of oppression on this panel. Mm -hmm. 
So mm-hmm. we're going to come to the, yeah, yeah. the oppressed now and we're going to ask right. you about oppression. <laughs> right. Like, so I think there's yeah. a bit of cognitive dissonance where 100%. then someone like me says, actually, no, I'm not oppressed. Mm. People don't kind of know what to do with you then. It's, it is really, yeah. violate, violates a bunch of narratives. Right. And that's a good thing. But, but imagine, good thing. imagine the opposite. Imagine them going, no, you are. Imagine <laughs> going, no, Africa, you are. But you... And don't forget that and be oppressed. But Stephen, that happens. Yeah, I know. That happens in some messages that you get. How how can I deny? How can you deny that you're oppressed? I've had people tell me. Um, so that's very interesting because it tends to be white people a lot of the time that do that. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Because they, they kind of, and in a way I, I sort of can understand where they're coming from in that they really want to stand up for something. They really believe um this idea that every single person that fits into this identity marker thinks and behaves and has had this experience. So they don't then realize that they've become quite regressive in their quest to be progressive, which is very, it's very interesting. I had the most interesting conversation um, about racism on Twitter many years ago where, um, I think the I think the trending topic of the day was like you can't speak you can't tell a black person what racism is or something like that, and so and I'm saying well no like racism can go both ways I yes. I can be racist to a white person yes I I can be I can not give someone a job because they're white mm-hmm. I can discriminate against them purely based on their skin color I can be, and this woman this this lady online was arguing with me basically saying no, white people can't tell a black person what racism is she was saying that to me and I literally go you're telling me what racism is right now. Yeah. And that is totally okay. Yes. And she apologized. She went, you're completely right. I should never have spoken to you. She literally went, I, I should never have told you what racism is. She got herself caught in her own. Right. Because she abandoned truth and she just started falling in line with this like yes. binary nonsense narrative that white people can't talk about racism. Yes. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Yes. To be honest as well, like I'm half white. Right. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I've got this luxury, I can shapeshift. Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> so does that mean, because I'm half white, I can only half talk about racism? Right. Because it's also racist just to say that I'm black. That's just picking one half of my identity, yeah. right? So it's a, See how this entire thing falls apart the more that you sort of... You interrogate it. Interrogate it. In any it. way, you blow on it and it just fucking crumbles. <laughs> because it's just bullshit. It's propped up bullshit by people that are virtue signaling right. that just don't know what they think or believe. So yeah. they've just gone with the cult. It's like... Yeah. It's the script. It's the yeah. script. That's why I think um, questioning, and just, it, it can seem so simple, but questioning can really allow you to sort of snap out of this trance because a lot of it is, a, it's a trance. It's a, trance. a script that people repeat and you regurgitate. And you and accept you par- it that interrogation. Right. It's like you wake up in the morning, you go to your like your side and then they give you the the beliefs, the 174 yeah. beliefs that you have to believe. And you go, okay, cool, got it. And you you don't even look at it. You just insert it in your little, it's like a right. SIM card. They just put it in your brain and you never understand why you, you believe go. these things because they're not your beliefs. Yeah. Someone said to me one day, they said, um, if you if you believe the same things as everybody around you, they're not your beliefs. Mm. And it was a really interesting thing because it's true. That's powerful. But think, if, think, if you believe every, if you believe pretty much everything that everyone around you believes, they are not your beliefs. They're the beliefs of the society you lived in. Yeah. And if I moved you to Germany at a certain time, yeah. you might well have had a different set of beliefs. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. Or if I moved you back to the, you know, my history is good, to the 16th century when slavery was rife. Yes. And you you had a slave, you might have believed a completely different set of things right. were okay and normal. So beliefs, there's there's very little correctness to, yeah. to, to many of them. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.